Hi there, this is Alana, and you're listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm here with Jamie. How is life treating you right now, Jamie? Very well. I could be like Dave Ramsey and say, better than I deserve, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to him, but that's a funny that uh... <laughs> is, That's his response. How's it going, Dave? But how are you doing? Better than I deserve. That's how I feel, <laughs> though. I do feel like, you know, life is good, my family's yeah. healthy, and things are going well. So better yeah. than I deserve. I love it. You. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Things are going well. You know this, but our listeners don't. We have a move coming up in the next yeah. few weeks. That I think everybody's excited about. So that's going to be a little bit crazy, but also something fun to look forward to. And Well, the fun yeah. thing is it wasn't long ago that we were talking on air and you mentioned, I, I wouldn't mind being more rural again. And that's kind of I the know. direction your move is going to take you is more rural. So I really feel like that conversation sort of planted the seed. It was in one of our COVID conversations and we were mm -hmm. talking about just, you know, there were some nice things about slowing down and. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I could see us going back to rural living again after, you know, after this and Hey, guess what? <laughs> That's what we're doing. So it really was for sure. I know God used the lockdown to kind of prepare our family to make that decision and lots of neat doors open. So I would say like, unfortunately we've moved a lot more than most families do in the last several years, but this is one move that we're all really looking forward to. That's good. I love yeah, that. Because yeah. sometimes with moves, it's the kids are touchy, you know, just oh, breaking it to them. Yeah. And even the logistics are stressful. And I mean, of course, the logistics will be stressful. But I think that the the excitement about going back to small town life is going to totally outweigh that. And, you know, we're going back to a community where we've already lived. So it's kind of like we're not going to have to go do the church hunting thing, you know, all of those sorts of things. So yeah, that I think is we're really all good. excited. There's part of me that wondered if really like this is just our excuse to react like an overreaction to boredom <laughs> you know what i mean like creating something big is happening let's move but i i really do think that um just a lot of things fell together in a really exciting way so yeah we're feeling just excited optimistic it's nice all the kids all three boys are excited about this and on board so it's pretty cool that's great yeah. And in like an hour, we're going to the vet to pick up our puppy. She got spayed today and they, already, they gave us a call, said she's doing fine. She was already awake like two hours ago. They're just giving her a few, you know, a few hours to observe. So she'll be in the cone of shame, days, but hopefully that recovery will be fine. The cone of shame. Poor thing. <laughs> I forget what movie that was. was it's that in a Up. Secret Life of Pets? Or? No, it's Up with oh. um, Doug the dog. Oh. And, <laughs> yeah. That movie. Oh, my goodness. And the dogs and the dog, the Doberman with the broken voice I translator. Know. Oh, you know what? I watched it. that when I was pregnant for the first time and literally peed my pants with the dog voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. All kinds of things that our, our listeners have learned about us in the past few months. <laughs> We're just keeping it real. Just we are keeping, keeping it, real. it real. But it's really fun. Today we get to go back to another kind of pre-COVID type format. We're back to our coffee break episodes where we're yeah. taking listener questions about prayer and kind of discussing it today. So I'm excited today. We're going to be talking about how our family history impacts our prayer life, which I think is such a unique topic. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that it got brought up. So let's, uh, should we dive into a word of prayer to open up? Yes. Let's do it. Okay. Father, we just thank you for bringing us back to another coffee break. We thank you for each one of our listeners and just for the listeners that have sent in questions and just for the opportunity to talk about these issues that if, if it's relevant for one woman, it's got to be relevant for many, many others. We just pray that this topic would be a blessing to so many that it would help us to just for Alana and I to better understand ourselves and our own families and for each person listening and especially our listener that submitted this question, um, that you would just really um, expose truth, that you would um, just guard our discussion and direct it and, and bring your word to light. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Amen. So our question today was submitted anonymously, which is totally possible to do. And if you guys have questions, you can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And we went a while like feeling behind on these, but we've actually gotten close to the end. So we're ready for more questions now. So send us your questions again. That's prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And do you want to dive in? Do you want to you want to read what we got sent or sum it up? Yeah, or? sure. I think I'll just read the actual Let's question because it. it's very specific. We're going to kind of address this particular specific question, but we're going to yeah. kind of pull back broaden and, and it up afterwards, broaden yeah. it up afterwards to just family history in general. But this yeah. is very specific and interesting. It's being raised in a family of mental health issues. Hearing voices was not a positive thing. So a topic I would love to hear you chat about maybe is hearing from God. I spent a lot of years wondering, was that God or am I hearing voices? So I've often been a little on edge in private prayer and hearing God, like I need to be extra on my guard because of family history. What I've come to the conclusion of is that knowing the word of God is the best foundation to be able to recognize the voice of God versus not his voice. That what he tells me will align with his word, but I do think that this hurdle slows me down and makes me lose confidence in my prayer life sometimes. And I think many women, whether it's this specific question or just hurdles that you have to overcome in your family life um, and, and how you've been raised and how you view God and how you view mm -hmm. father and communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of those things can be prayer blocks. They can be hurdles sure. that keep us. So this is a great question. So thank you, anonymous listener, for submitting this question. I think this is going to be very, very important. I think this is going to be something I will personally just be kind of chewing on for a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's important to open this up with the I don't even want to call it a disclaimer, like with the truth, absolute fact that neither Jamie or I are mental health experts. We aren't medical experts. And some of these things, you know, with schizophrenia in the family or things like that, we, we can't speak to that as experts, but we can definitely talk about hearing from God, how to know if it's God's voice. And yeah, and then I'm super excited to take this discussion into just kind of family history in general, you know, whether or not there's mental illness in the family. So I feel like Anonymous has been super wise already mm -hmm. in recognizing that maybe more so than the average believer that she needs to be careful about taking what she hears in her prayer time, right? I, I think that that sounds wise based on the family history there. And I think it's wise for all of us, whether or not we have a family history of mental illness, to remember kind of her conclusion, and that is anything we think we hear from God is going to align with what he tells us specifically in the Bible. So God is never going to speak to you in prayer time and tell you to do something that goes against his word. And I think that if that's the only takeaway people take away, then that is the most, you know, in this entire discussion, I think that's the most important thing to remember is the biggest question. How do I know if it's God talking to me or voices in my head or just my own thoughts? Well, it's for sure. If it is God, it's going to line up with what he says in the Bible. Yeah, that's the first filter you can run it through is, does mm -hmm. it align with God's word? Then it could be God. If it doesn't yeah, align with God's exactly. word, absolutely not God. Yeah, it's, so yeah, yeah, that's our flow chart. And that's the very first question. Mm -hmm. Does what I think God is telling me go with or against scripture? If it goes against scripture, it's a very clear, that is not God talking to you. Now, I'm not saying it's demons whispering in your ear. It could just be your own musings, your own thoughts or whatever, but it's certainly not God if it goes against his word. And if it does not go against his word, then it might be God. It might not. So then at that point, you know, there are other questions you can ask yourself, like, does this um, kind of align with other ways that God seems to be working in my life? So he can, he talks to us, not just through prayer, you know, through his word primarily, and also through like pastors, preachers, other Christians, I think that that's a really good way to seek confirmation. And sometimes in just, I don't want to call them coincidences, but just kind of in the way that life happens. Like Jamie, you've been tracking, you've gotten the inside scoop in our family's decision about whether or not this move was going to be a big deal. I would say it was like 
10%, hey, we think God might be telling this to us, and 50%, things just kind of lined up to make it work, and 40%, just kind of logistics. We looked at the numbers, we looked at the job opportunity, we looked at the living options out there, and it seems like a good idea. So I'd say like that's kind of an example of God using multiple things. It wasn't just that like Scott and I woke up one morning with a voice in our head saying, it's time for your family to move. And I don't think it's unspiritual to look at some of the things like, you know, we looked at the budget, we looked at the salary, we looked at the cost of living, the cost of moving. I don't think that it's unspiritual to take those things into account as well. And yeah, sometimes God's going to call you to do something that on paper doesn't make sense. But a lot of times, if it's a decision like this, it's going to be does it make sense? Does it, are the, the right doors opening? You know, so like the day, a day or two after we decided that, yes, we're going to, Scott's going to accept this job opportunity. We're going to move the family. We had told the kids like two days later, our landlord calls and says, oh, by the way, we're getting ready to sell the house, you know, and that was just <laughs> confirmation on confirmation because very good chance once they sell it, we would have had to have moved out anyway, you know? So I think God talks to us in so many different ways. And what you feel God telling you is probably in my like hierarchy of what I give the most weight to. I'd say like, that's just one of many, many things like God's word is going to get the highest weight. And I don't know, I've been, I've been blabbering. You jump in and tell me what you think. You have not been blabbering. I think that's all really important. And I love, blabbity, that, you blabbity, have, blabbity, blabbity. <laughs> I love that you have a real life current example mm-hmm, to kind of mm-hmm. get that. Yeah. Well, as you were talking about like, so that's how we, our family is very similar in the way that we, we tend to be balanced, the pragmatic with the, mm-hmm. we, we pray for a neon sign and very rarely do we get right. the God voice or the neon sign. Yeah. I, in fact, mm-hmm. I don't know that we've ever gotten specifically that. Um, but I have a friend who actually, um, Christy Olaf, she was one of our, um, one of our interview episodes and she talked about Uh. hearing from God. I'll, I'll try to link to that also. Um, in addition to her interview, there's episode Mm -hmm. 38. Is it me, God, or the devil talking? And how do I know the difference? That's another good one. one. But Christy, um, is our former pastor's wife. She's the worship leader of, um, the church we attended in Arizona and, her, her husband, when they were considering, they felt called to plant this church and they went out mm-hmm. and he actually heard kind of an audible voice. I mean, that was how he described it. Not like, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it wasn't like, did you hear that? But it was, right, he right. heard, he yeah, heard he the words. To him, yeah. So I think on the converse of, you know, not, um, not feeling like you have to have this overly spiritual experience don't necessarily discount a different way that God chooses to speak to you, whether it's a picture in your mind or a dream or a vision, but do it carefully. And it reminded me of this. um, Mm -hmm. First Thessalonians five. um, Five something, five (laughs) something, five, 16 through 22, where it says rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good, reject any kind of evil. So I would say that I might at times err on the side of being skeptical Mm -hmm. about my own Mm -hmm. ability to hear God, or if Mm -hmm. something happens, or I feel like there's, you know, I might treat. I might be tempted to treat those kinds of things like an audible voice or a extreme, what I, what you would call a coincidence that, that might be God Mm -hmm. working. I'm skeptical. I'm like, but is that really God or is it just a coincidence? But don't treat those things with contempt. Don't discount them or discard them just because they're different from what you would expect. And Mm -hmm. on the other hand, but then the very next thing is test everything. (laughs) Yeah. Everything. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but it, yeah. test it little by little and, and you can take it cup by cup and, you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't yeah. know. And so, I know we've talked about this on the show a bunch of times. Like I, 
I pray often, like, God, you know that I'm thick-headed. So if you really are trying <laughs> to, like, my default in, in many things, like, sometimes God has spoken to me, and it's just, it's so clearly him that I I don't feel the need to question a ton. But again, you right. you test everything, test against the word. Every so often, I've gotten something that feels so clearly God. And a lot of times, it's like, God, I have no idea if this is you or not, but I'm going to trust that God knows my doubts. I'm going to trust that God knows what it takes to get through to me. And I'm going to, so often what I've done with God is I've taken the, like the burden of proof is almost on God, but I do that with humility. Like God is not obligated to prove himself to us, Mm -hmm. but what I'll do is I'll pray something like, God, this is what I think you're saying, but you know that I'm prone to deception and I'm stubborn and thick headed. So please show me if I'm not hearing correctly. And there's never been a time, it's not like, you know, immediately after I pray that I know the exact answer, but there has never been a time where God has left me hanging for like years without an answer. Um, We had a super interesting discussion. So I told you our um, family's going through a Bible study in the book of Judges Mm -hmm. and we just did Gideon and we were talking a lot about his fleece and the difference between putting out a fleece and is this putting God to the test, like Mm -hmm. what Jesus was tempted to do. And my oldest had such a, such a wise thing, which, you know, like it's one of those things where a kid says something and like, it makes total sense, but you've never put it in those words. And so it's like, well, duh, what he said was, Okay, so let's say you put out a fleece to God, and by fleece, we're talking about like, you know, God told Gideon, I want you to go attack this army. Gideon said, okay, if this is really you, please give me a sign. So he put out this fleece. If the fleece was wet and the ground was dry, and then he did it the opposite. If the ground was dry and the fleece was wet, that was going to be God's way of confirming that he was speaking directly to Gideon. And so the discussion we had with the kids was, hey, is this smart? Is this wise? Is this putting God to the test? Like what? It, how it should a Christian today treat something like throwing out a fleece? And my oldest son, he was like, well, you know, if you put out a fleece and God doesn't do it, you don't know if God is saying no to you or if he's just ignoring your request, which makes a lot of sense, right? I mean, it's one yeah. thing if your your fleece, so it's almost one of those things like a fleece can confirm something, but it actually can't anti-confirm something. No. Well, and I have a, a good friend that always would say, be careful. Cause you know, if, if you're willing to say, God, if, if I'm supposed to do this, make it rain tomorrow, mm-hmm. then why wouldn't you be willing to say, God, if you want me to do this, um, levitate this pencil. Mm. Like, it's kind of like, you know, like yeah. if you're trying to bend God's will, you're, mm-hmm. you're opening it up. To, so anyway, it's just kind yeah. of, yeah. So there, there's the devil's advocate there, but yeah, it is hard to know if it doesn't happen, mm-hmm. but if it does happen, you know, yes, for sure. But if it, or is yeah. it just coincidence? Or is it just nope. coincidence that it rained? rained? I know. Yeah. I would say like, I don't, I think my conclusion is it's okay to ask God for further confirmation, but I don't love the putting like definitions to that. I think a better, I don't think it's necessarily wrong, but I think a better way in general would just be God. This is what I think you're saying. Please confirm it to me somehow instead Mm -hmm. of like, if this, then that, because again, you don't know, would it have rained anyway? Would the ground have been dry and the fleece wet anyway? Or if it doesn't come true, just like my son said, maybe that's not God saying no. Maybe he's just choosing to not answer it in that specific way. Mm -hmm. So I would say in that hierarchy of how much weight we give things, I would say something like a fleece would, would probably be best at the very, very bottom. Well, and I do have two stories of fleece examples that Mm -hmm. I I kind of feel like God meets us where we are and judges our heart, you know? So Mm -hmm. there was a girl in, when I worked with the youth in Virginia, there was a girl in my Bible study who didn't have a church background and was just coming to youth group, but not church and kind of starting Mm -hmm. to learn about God. And she prayed for one of the first times when she was out in nature somewhere. And she Mm -hmm. said, God, if you're real, show me a butterfly, make a butterfly, you know, Mm -hmm. and like a second later, this butterfly flew past and she said, Uh I knew God was real. Was it a coincidence? I don't know, but maybe God met her pure 
Like, mm-hmm. I don't know that, but and God then, never has to, but sometimes he doesn't he'll have choose to, to, but maybe yeah. he chooses to sometimes, but anyway, and then there was another example where my son had, was, was just like, I believe there's a God, but was Jesus really, is, is Jesus the only way is, is Christianity mm-hmm. the right religion? Mm-hmm. And he just, he prayed before he went to bed that God would show him that mm-hmm. Jesus was really the son of God. And the next morning he woke up and he had a scripture in his mind and, and mm-hmm. he woke up and immediately he's like, mom, get my Bible. And he right. and turned to it. And it was this scripture that actually talked about Jesus seated at the th- right hand of the throne of God. Mm-hmm. And anyway, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, d- God does meet us where we are sometimes, but I think the danger is that we would get into the habit of basically treating God like a genie in a bottle or something like yeah or the magic eight ball you yeah know? the magic eight ball mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. yeah I agree fleeces yeah. should be left for yeah last resort yeah. or last resort and and just Maybe yeah not. don't don't rely on them do it prayerfully God can use a fleece you know mm. but it it's getting a little close to dictating to God yeah. you and know it, yeah. although yeah but like you said, like with your friend in the butterfly, I I wouldn't say that's coincidence. I think God for sure I believe answered her. He did. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I would be careful for sure about that yeah. though. Well, another thing that I do sometimes is I will say, kind of like you, God, you know that I question, you know, I'm not sure. I don't, you know, I believe you. It's not, it's mm-hmm. not you. It's me. I, I believe in you, but I don't believe in my ability to hear from you. And True. I'll specifically say, lead me to scripture to help me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so there have been times when I've found scripture that I sort of thought confirmed what I mm-hmm. knew. And at yeah. the time, my husband and I were trying to, you know, come to a decision and see if our decisions lined up. And to be honest with you, there was one time when my decision didn't line up with his the first time. Mm-hmm. And then the second time it changed and was different. Mm-hmm. And I got it. But with that added confirmation of my husband and I coming yeah. to agreement, God did reveal through scripture something that helped me to realize mm-hmm. what ended up being our decision and looking yeah. back was the right decision. So right. I think confirmation in multiple different ways is always good because none of us For sure. and all the yeah. time. And again, don't don't discredit just common sense as well, because God yeah. gave us common sense. I love, I think it's in Jeremiah, the verse that says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. And I think, you know, that's such a nice invitation for us to, to ask God. He Or, you know, in James, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given. God is going to show himself he is going to confirm and he's not going to leave you um feeling kind of wishy-washy like that in james it talks about the you know the boat tossed on the waves or things like that Mm -hmm. um you know so let's go back to anonymous's question you know Mm -hmm. like her concern is that when she's praying and she thinks she's hearing something from god she's worried about kind of the mental health ramifications again i don't i don't feel qualified to speak to that at all but i would say that you know you don't need to be afraid in that if it is God, you're not going to take like one tiny itty bitty thing that you think you hear from him and change your entire life around that. You're going to take that seed and ask him to confirm it again Mm -hmm. and again and again and again and again. And so I feel like we can be trusting that he's, he knows how much confirmation each of us needs. Right. And so it's going to be okay. And that it's okay to take a slightly skeptical view as long as we do so with humility, like God, please, can you show me one more time? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. are you sure this is going to happen the way you said, or are you sure this is where you want me to go? Can you confirm it one more time? I think asking for confirmation in scripture is one of the most powerful ways to get confirmation from the Lord. So for example, Scott and I went through this thing where like we were together, then we weren't, and then back before we were engaged. And then I truly felt like God had told me in 60 days, you're going to be engaged to this guy. And I'm like, okay, is this God? Is this not? Is this my wishful thinking? And so I asked God, like, can you confirm it in scripture? And I was reading through Jeremiah at the time 
in the very next day, like it wasn't just like, let me look up verses that I think are going to prove what God's telling me, you know, right. that's, dangerous. that's dangerous. <laughs> but, um, you know, I was going through Jeremiah and it was talking about how it was like they were appointed for a 70 year time. And I remember what I had asked God specifically was like, it seems so strange that you would put a date to it. Mm-hmm. Like that feels weird that you would tell me the dates. And I hadn't, um, been thinking like, I'm like, God, I don't think you've ever done this before. Well, yeah, he had, he gave the Israelites a date. Your exile is going to be 70 years guys. Mm -hmm. And so that was confirmation from God's word. And then, you know, sometimes you, at that point, you still just sit on it. Like, even then I was like, okay, I'm, this might be what God is telling me. It also might be that I'm just this hope, hopeless romantic who can't get over this guy, (laughs) you know? So I would say, yeah, multiple multiple streams of confirmation, especially for big, huge, life-changing things, I think is important. And it's it's always got to come back to God's word. Amen. Alrighty. Well, let's shift gears and talk about like how our family history impacts our prayer life. Cause I think that's Mm -hmm. such an interesting facet to this whole discussion. I do too. Yeah. What are your kind of initial thoughts on that? Cause like, to be honest, I don't think I've ever even thought about it. Yeah. I mean, I think um, the first thing that comes to my mind that could have impact your prayer life for, for better or worse is the fact that God is referred to as our heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And if you have a good open communication with your father, Mm -hmm. if you have a father in your life, um, then that could open doors for a healthy beginning point with prayer. But on the other hand, if you don't have a good relationship with your father or you don't have a father figure or a father in your life, Mm -hmm. um, or if you have negative, you know, if you have an abusive background or anything like that, that could, I imagine would, you know, really could hinder for sure a a relationship with God or even your desire to pursue a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you can separate. I mean, obviously God is a separate entity. He's our heavenly father. But that relationship is so paramount in our lives. I don't yeah. see how you can just totally cut it off, you know, and right. you totally just say, oh, well, God's totally different. In other right. ways, once you get past mm-hmm. that, obviously there can be a lot of healing and a lot of restoration mm-hmm. that could come from that. But mm-hmm. initially I could see that potentially being a block or a barrier. Oh, I love that. Life. Yeah. It's almost like a great just kind of journaling prompt is, mm-hmm. you know, what was your relationship like with your dad growing up? And then how has that impacted your view on God today? I think that can be really powerful. A similar question I think could be like, how did your parents view prayer? Mm-hmm. Um, was it seen as like a duty, a have to? Was it seen as like, maybe they didn't do it at all? I think a lot of Christians, I think in kind of like Western Christianity, I think a lot of people kind of, we get so caught up in our like, um, like the Protestant work ethic, you know? And so I think that really gets ingrained in a lot of people, this whole idea that God helps those who help themselves. Like, don't be this lazy person who just sits around praying, be the kind of person who goes out and makes a difference. Mm -hmm. I think that a lot of us probably saw that um, kind of mindset in different ways. So I think that would be another fabulous question to just do some reflecting on like, what was your parents' view on prayer? Mm -hmm. And how might that impact how you see prayer today? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, and back to the relationship with father, Mm -hmm. um, I think just your family's view on who God is and kind of how you were taught. So were you brought up in a family where um, God was bringing judgment, God was looking to catch you doing wrong, Um, or maybe it's a thing where your father was like that and you're you're picturing that as who God is, but it's just your Mm -hmm. view of God and because God doesn't speak back audibly because we don't, well, usually we've just right. got done with that. Okay. But you know, we don't necessarily know the exact words of God. Um, if we don't have a strong foundation of scripture to know God's attributes and to understand how he interacts and, and who he is. Um, or if we take just one attribute of God and take that to its extreme, like God's judgment and his wrath and his, you know, um, discipline and things like that Mm -hmm. without the grace or vice versa. If we ignore the fact that he has standards, Mm -hmm. our prayer lives can reflect that. And I think that it's so important not to just accept 
the the faith of our families and our foundation yeah. and even the churches we were brought up in because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because God is bigger than that. And I just think that that we need to ourselves dig into scripture and, and learn about who God is yeah. in order to have a prayer life that is based on, you know, worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Right. Well, I know how much you love being put on the spot with questions like oh. this. Do you remember <laughs> like your earliest memory about prayer? So one of my early memories, this is really funny. So I, I don't remember a time when I didn't talk to God mm -hmm. in my head, like when I didn't know that he was there. Um, mm -hmm. I have two memories. So my one of my memories is not specifically about prayer, but it was, I just remember sitting in church and thinking when I was in the sanctuary, we, I grew up in a Methodist church that had like the, like the, the little altar in the front with the candles and then behind mm -hmm. it there were these plants and it looked like there was like light glowing. There was just there uh -huh. were these spotlights coming out behind okay. it. I thought God lived there. Aww. And I was afraid to go up. And I remember the day that I decided to go up to the altar Aww. and get close and look behind to see. And I was so disappointed to see so that like, there were, were you, these spotlights. What do you think that you were expecting to see? Like a little miniature Jesus just sitting there <laughs> hanging out or do you know? I don't, I think I just expected to see just this light, you know, like just yeah. light coming up from nothing. But yeah. anyway, when I first saw that, so I just, I re that doesn't have to do with prayer. But then I do remember um, one night, I just remember lying in bed and picturing and just saying to God, God, I have so many questions. I wish I could just ask you any question and have you just answer. And I just remember thinking how cool that would be to be in heaven with God and mm -hmm. just ask him everything. Cause like mm -hmm. I was this curious kid. And so I joke that God answered that prayer with Google. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but, yeah. I, I invented Google really. Good in my for prayer. you. I, that's I, awesome. You I, prayed I pray, it into existence. I prayed Google in, <laughs> but, but I don't know. I didn't, um, like we said, grace at the table, like uh -huh. literally God is great. God is good. Now mm -hmm. we thank him for our food. Um, at night, I would say, now I lay me down to sleep. Mm -hmm. I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. So those kinds of prayers were part of my life, but like that my parents kind of led me in, but mm -hmm. I, I just always remember kind of just praying in my head to God. So I would say that one prayer, the, the, now I lay me down to sleep and mm -hmm. the God is great. I remember those from very early, but the first like memory of prayer was that okay. like one prayer lying in bed wondering like god i just really want to know the answers to all these questions yeah, how about you cute. um i remember a sermon and i know i've talked about it before on the show but the sermon where my pastor talked about how easy prayer was like mm -hmm. so basically he told his friend i'll be praying for you and the friend was like why would you do that and then he was like because it's so easy <laughs> Like, I, I hate that story because like for years I thought to myself, okay, I guess prayer is supposed to be easy. I'm like, I don't think anything and then, can be further from the truth. Right. And then why isn't it for me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like my dad really modeled prayer, but, and I, I don't like, I don't want this to sound like dad bashing. This had nothing to do with the way he modeled it. But I remember very clearly, like in my mind, serious prayer was kind of in the adult realm. It was sort of like kids do kind of like what you were doing, you know, the now I lay me down to sleep. And then when you become an adult, that's when you start praying for real. Again, I don't um, disparage my dad and I'm super thankful for the modeling he gave. And he was an absolute man of prayer. But I remember somehow wires got crossed. And in my mind, that turned into, well, kids are just kind of there. And then when they become adults is when they get serious about their faith. Hmm. Those are kind of like the two sort of prayer lessons that I feel like I picked up on. Yeah. Early on. I do remember one more. I remember mm -hmm. it was like the, um, there was a little girl, there was a girl that um, her family was driving along the highway and these kids were throwing rocks from an overpass. Mm -hmm. Like they thought it was funny. They were throwing mm -hmm. rocks at cars, not knowing what would happen. And a car mm -hmm. uh, and a rock went through her windshield and mm. hit her and she had a uh, like severe brain trauma and oh, she was in wow. a coma. And so I remember our pastor um, came up and asked us to pray for her. She was in our community. She wasn't a church member, but, um, mm -hmm. but I think she was about my age. 
I don't mm. remember my age at the time. Yeah. You know, five scary, or six or though. seven or eight. Um, yeah. But I remember praying and just like, like I had never prayed before, like, God, mm. help her to be okay. Like just yeah. praying so hard for her mm-hmm. and like, mm-hmm. like really pouring my heart into it and just like having this feeling that I knew that if I prayed enough that God would hear me. Wow. Um, she lived and I actually not long ago looked up her name to see if mm-hmm. I could find her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I couldn't find okay. I couldn't find anything about how she was doing. Yeah. Um, I don't think she was ever the same, but oh, um, but I know that sad. she did survive. So anyway, who knows how God used that prayer, you know? That yeah. was that was a very pivotal oh, for sure. prayer in my life. And I So I the that, Yeah, no, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, that was okay. Go ahead. So the true crime addict in me wants to ask if anything happens to the people who were throwing rocks. Do you know if they got in trouble or they I, I believe they got caught and did mm-hmm. get in a lot of trouble. They were minors and they were, yeah. you know, young I'm sure they kids, didn't but, know what they were doing, but man, that's but no, terrible. they were, there were legal ramifications. I think there okay. was a trial and everything, but I don't wow. know what came of yeah. it. Yikes. No, that's, I think it's, it's so interesting. And I've, I've never done this. Like Miss Anonymous, your question really is like blowing my mind in terms of how, our kind of early childhood memories about prayer impact things, our family history. Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't even touched on generational sins, but I know we've, we've mentioned it in other episodes. So um, if you happen, I know you're better than I am about pulling episode titles and numbers <laughs> out of thin air, <laughs> but you know, I think that's another thing to that, you know, ties up in this. If you've got a family history of addiction, you can pray and, ask God to kind of end that, that curse on the family. And I'm, I don't want to, maybe curse is a loaded term, but just sort of end that cycle. Maybe it's better. Um, a cycle of divorce, a cycle of abuse, a cycle of mental illness, all of those things. I think it's important for us, especially for those of us who have kids or grandkids to be praying for them too, that those cycles wouldn't perpetuate. Like there are so many, I feel like we could do like 20 episodes just on like family relationships and prayer and how they impact things. But um, Oh, definitely. For sure. At least a good, good dipping our toes in the water of it. It is. Well, and one other thing I think that would be a neat exercise to do um, would be just kind of like in many different areas of business and even in the secular mm-hmm. world, they'll, you'll go through these exercises of, of finding blocks and you ask the question, yeah. what about prayer? Think back to prayer. What, um, what memories do you have about prayer that evoke mm-hmm. emotion, good or bad? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that might be telling to write those things down. Yeah. And, and remember. Then what do you learn about prayer from those? Like what lessons about prayer might you have learned from that? Right. Or how does that particular instance inhibit or open mm-hmm. up your prayer life? Because there can mm-hmm. be elements of negative experiences associated with prayer For sure. That do, like you're still holding on to those and you might need to process through with God or even a counselor. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Or, you know, we talked in our COVID conversations about this kind of hang up that praying for long periods of time is actually kind of lazy or Mm self-indulgent and all of these things, you know, all of these prayer blocks come up. It's, um, yeah, really eye-opening to look at certain things that way. So I've got to ask you, doing your little um like prayer ditties you know the now I lay me down to sleep and things what would you think like if you had to say one lesson good or bad that that those taught you about prayer what do you think it would be I think it's that prayer is something that you need to make time for and make a routine Mm -hmm. so when you know before we ate we would say God is great God is good now we thank Mm -hmm. him for our food um I got to the point where I would recite it and not really know what the words were. And I, I, Mm -hmm. it wasn't until later that I would think about what the words meant. Yeah. Still just the act of praying Mm -hmm. was a habit. And it was something that, you know what, before I have, before I have the luxury of digging into my food, even when I'm hungry, Mm -hmm. I got to make sure God gets his time first. He gets the first fruits. And before I go to bed, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to God for a minute and just, you know, let him know, just tell him I'm going to sleep and, and I'm your kid. And you know, that, that, that yeah. instilled the importance, I think, of 
of making prayer a part of your day. I love it. That's wonderful. Do you remember the story, like out of all the stories that listeners have shared with us, my all-time favorite is the, you might remember the details better. There was a a very ill family member and everybody asked for prayer. Do you remember details? Mm-hmm. Okay, why don't you tell I am the, story? the worst. I'm the worst Are you at, bad details. at details. Okay. Yes. I, so, yeah, you you go ahead and, and Okay, tell. and then you correct, you jump in, interrupt, yeah. whatever. So no, someone was super favorite. sick. All of the family members asked to pray for this woman and the little itty bitty like toddler or preschool age, mm-hmm. her association with prayer was praying for your food, right? Am I right so far? Yeah. Is that what we're doing? Okay. Uh-huh. And so- they asked this little girl to pray for grandma or whoever it was. And she was like, dear God, thank you for the food. Amen. Or, you know, God is great. God is good. Or, you know, whatever it was. And she got better like from that prayer. And our takeaway from that is, okay, super adorable story, but also like God knew this tiny itty bitty girl's heart. She didn't say the right words. (laughs) She didn't say the right thing, but man, he knew her heart. And I, Mm -hmm. I just adore that story so much. And the fact that the person in the hospital bed, which I think was the grandma, but I don't remember Something for sure. Something like that. Mm-hmm. But the person in the hospital bed knew that that child's prayer was a turning point for her. Like oh, that, really? I mean, okay. that's, that's the impression that I get now. Uh-huh. Maybe I'm making that up, but I know. That, this that's is going to turn feeling. into this urban legend story, but oh, no. how wonderful. Anyway, if this was urban your legends urban story, with Alana and Jamie, yeah. That's right. If this is your story, please write us and tell us the original. Do. Or, you know, maybe we've even got it somewhere like in Gmail or something, but yeah, I look. love that story I do because too. it's just, it's such a good reminder that we don't need to say exactly the right words. Mm-hmm. Yay. This is so fun. I'm so glad to be back to our coffee break episodes and just chatting with you about prayer and everything else. Do you want to, do you want to leave with any other last, last words that sounds so ominous, doesn't it? I know. No, I don't want to leave any final <laughs> words. I'd like to keep on talking for a while. Not right. in the podcast, but no, um, no, I think that's great wrap up. And other than our prayers for the unsaved. Yeah, I, awesome. I think that's great. But yes, anonymous, you know who you are. I actually know who you are too, but ooh, ooh. Uh-huh. Who you are even <laughs> I do. And I really appreciate this question and thank you for being a listener yes. and supporting us and, and for bringing this really neat question. I think that's going to going to get a lot of people thinking and and For help sure. people to move forward in their prayer lives. But yeah. And I want to say one more thing to anonymous because first of all like I do hear tons of wisdom and just being a little bit careful and cautious and knowing that you've got to take what you think you hear from God and compare it to scripture. But I also want to encourage you if there is like excessive fear mm-hmm. when you're praying, I would encourage you to say it's okay to let go of that. You are protected. God has given you a sound mind. Um we shouldn't have to enter into our prayer times in a spirit of fear. And so I hope that if that kind of does describe where you're at, that you can just feel that burden lifted from you. Yeah. So, and actually we can, after prayers for the unsaved, if you could close for prayer for our anonymous friend, that would be great. I will. Now, pray those now for her. can I pray for anonymous without knowing who anonymous is and have it count? That's another question for another day. <laughs> you need to submit an anonymous prayer, re- uh, an anonymous That's right. question. That be funny? We ran out of questions, so you and I start submitting anonymous questions to ourselves. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, please don't make us do that. Please submit us your questions at prayingchristianwomen.com slash yes. questions. Hashtag smoothest segue in the world. Let's uh, let's do our prayers for the unsaved. And then, yes, I would love to pray for Anonymous. And I'm going to answer my own question by saying, yes, I don't know who Anonymous is, but God does, and it, that prayer will count. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, we are going to pray for the unsaved people in our lives. If you have not, if you just joined us recently and you don't know about this, we have um, – Prayers for 30 Days of Prayer for the Unsaved is now on Amazon as a paperback or ebook. I'm so excited about this. You could go to um, Amazon and look up 30 Days of Prayer for the Unsaved. Um, and you can also sign up at prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved if you would like to get 30 prayers emailed to you daily 
Um, so one, not 30 daily, one a day for 30 days. <laughs> That'd be pretty Each impressive. day you'll get 30 emails <laughs> <laughs> and you've got to forward each one to 30 different people. <laughs> no, that, yeah, no, that's did. not true. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you like these prayers and you want to pray more than just when you hear us on the podcast, go right ahead and get those. We would love to share those with you in any of those formats, but we would just fun like fact. to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Let me share my fun fact real quick. Do it. You can actually pray on, at times when you're not listening to the podcast. I'm not sure everybody realizes that. So I just, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry, Jamie. Go our, on. Ne our next episode, we'll deal with that topic. Of, our next anonymous question. <laughs> yes. Praying other than when you're with us in the podcast, but yes. So uh, pick, you know, prayerfully pick those one to three people that you are committed to pray for, for the long haul and, and join us to pray for those people now. Um, all right. Thank you, Father, for being the one true God. I confess, Lord, how easy it is to worship idols instead of you. Forgive me, Lord, and teach me to worship you and only you. God, my friend, is trapped in the bondage of idolatry. They don't know they're sinning because they don't know you. Show them yourself, Lord. Show them that you are the one and only God and that you alone are worthy of all of their worship. I pray for the day when my friend will bow to only you, when every other idol in their life will be torn, torn down. Demolish those strongholds that my friend trusts in, Lord, until you are all that's left to give comfort, hope, and strength. Teach my friend that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and allow my friend to worship you freely in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. And now I'll close us in prayer for Anonymous. Okay. God, we just thank you for all of our listeners. And we do say a special prayer today for the listener who submitted this question. And I just thank you for the wisdom and grace that you have given them. I do pray for perfect protection and a sound mind and for an end to these um, kind of generations that have to struggle through these mental illnesses. And we pray specifically that fear would be lifted when Anonymous comes to you in prayer and that you would give Anonymous such a sound mind that these fears of hearing voices that aren't yours would just be taken away, God. We pray for anybody listening who does struggle with mental illness or who have loved ones who have struggles with mental illness, God. We just recognize that you are so sovereign. These are big things that we don't even know how to address, but we just pray for your grace and light and love to shine in every specific situation represented in our listening audience today. Thanks for the chance to come here and record. Thank you for Jamie, for the technology that allows this to happen. For all of our listeners, God, amen. Amen. All right. I think that's it. That's, that's the end, right? <laughs> It's been so long. Like, do we have a benediction? Do we have a blessing or do we just say goodbye? <laughs> Not for this one. But again, just a reminder, prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. We'd love to hear your questions. And until next time. Bye. Bye. How about that? <laughs> Bye. Bye. For real. <laughs>